Hello again. When I saw English Heritage tweeting yesterday about Black History Month, I could not resist having a look at their website to see what they are telling people about this subject. In the description to this video, I give a link to the relevant part of their site. Remember, this is a charity which is particularly concerned with English history. They look after all sorts of places, uh, stately homes and so on, Roman forts. On their website, we find sections for medieval castles, prehistoric monuments, the English Civil War, dissolution of the monasteries, and of course also black history. I simply do not have the energy or the time to detail every falsehood and piece of misleading information and mistakes contained in this part of English Heritage's website. The organisation is supposed to be devoted to English history and how they can reconcile this aim with the nonsense they're putting up about black people in England is a mystery to me. I will skim over a few of the more notable examples of their ignorance and deceit, but I urge viewers to go through the material there for themselves. I'm only giving the tip of the iceberg here. We begin with this statement. Black histories are a vital part of England's story, reaching back many centuries. There is evidence of African people in Roman Britain as far back as the 3rd century AD, and black communities have been present since at least 1500. Note the linguistic trick being played on readers here. Start by talking about black histories, and then move seamlessly into mentioning African people here in Roman times. With luck, readers will fall for this, and having seen the word black, will assume that the Africans mentioned are actually black, which they are not, of which more later. There is literally no evidence of any black community in England in 1500. There are one or two random black people, usually visiting foreigners like John Blank, the famous trumpet player who lived in this country for a few years. But the idea of black communities is absolute fantasy. Scroll down and click on Story of the Windrush. We learn that it's widely accepted that black people have been in Britain for centuries as the historian Peter Fryer asserts in Staying Power. Among the troops of the Roman Imperial Army defending Hadrian's Wall in the 3rd century AD was a division of Moors. It is not widely accepted by anybody at all, and the Moors mentioned were from the Roman province of Mauritania, which was where Morocco is today. These troops weren't black at all, they were Berbers and as white as the Romans themselves. Once again, the trick is you to mentioning the word black and then talking about Africans or Moors and hoping that readers will then subconsciously visualise black people. Very tricksy. Very tricksy indeed, English heritage. How about this? King and his fellow passengers were confident of their welcome, both because of the new British Nationality Act of that year conferring British citizen status on colonial subjects, and also because the West Indians were needed to bolster the workforce. This is in reference to um, Caribbean immigrants coming here after the Second World War. West Indians were not needed to bolster the workforce at all. That is a lie. Those in charge of various Caribbean islands, Trinidad for instance, had serious problem with unemployment, and this was creating political instability in their countries. It was they who contacted Britain and tried to get the British to take some of these unemployed men off their hands. All the initiatives for the recruitment of staff for London transport and so on came from the Caribbeans themselves, not Britain. We were solving a problem for the West Indians. Wasn't the West Indians coming here to solve some problem we had? The section next to the Windrush is about St Hadrian, or Adrian, and it says, St Hadrian, who was born in North Africa, played a pivotal role in the early history of the English Church. 
Very true, but he was born in the former Roman province, roughly where Libya is now. He was white. Why on earth is he being featured in the section of the English Heritage Site about black history? He was no more black than I am. Scroll down until you come to this part. Painting our past, the African diaspora in England. In 2021, English Heritage commissioned a series of six portraits celebrating the lives of people of the African diaspora, whose lives, whose stories have contributed to England's rich history. Remember, this is the Black History section. Two of those portraits, though, which English Heritage engaged black women to paint, are of white people. One is St. Hadrian, and the other is the Emperor Septimius Severus. Severus was born in the same area as St. Hadrian. His mother was Roman, his father Phoenician. He was white. And we have statues of him, and even a painting to show this. Yet the painting commissioned for English Heritage shows him as a black sub-Saharan African. Mary Seacole features, of course, and needless to say, is the victim of racism. We read that her effort to be recruited as a nurse was rebuffed by the team who worked under Florence Nightingale, perhaps because of Seacole's colour. That is a plain lie. All the nurses who were recruited to work under Florence Nightingale were required to submit written applications supported by references. Seacole didn't do this, but hung around government offices hoping to bypass the usual procedure. She did not apply to be a nurse under Florence Nightingale at all. So she wasn't rebuffed, she didn't make an application. I haven't the heart to go on anymore. I could write a book about the falsehoods and silly mistakes in this black history section of the English Heritage website. Shocking business.